Sometimes we forget why we're here. It's easy to fall off track. These help us remember. These battle scars don't look like the fate. Don't look like they're ever gone away. They ain't never gonna change. These battles. Growing up, I had a dream, something no one else could see. Tell me what it means when your faith is falling beneath your knees and you can't breathe. Everything you see reminds you of what you're not or something you won't be. You gotta take what you're given, that's how we live it. Don't be mad at the system, it's simply how we've existed. I hear a lot of people talking like they politicians and choose to be an accountant because it's safe in a business. Not because they wanna do it, just because they heard it pays. And who the fuck wants to be poor knowing that's how we've been raised? Society is getting heavy, I can feel the weight. The pressure of success is like a hundred million pounds of shame. And that's the reason I'm staying up late, trying to find a way to escape. The stereotypes this day and age is making me feel like the only way I'll be happy is getting signed to a label and making money through rapping. I wanna share my emotion because this world is attacking the very principle of life that lets the people be happy. If you don't have a reason to breathe, why even live? These battles cause our impressions of everything that it is. That reached a hundred million people I tell them there's a reason that we're all created equal Cause some decide to be great And some decide a sequel to an average person's life Is simply what they want to be So you make your decision All I know is what I'm given Won't define the life I lead Or the way I dwell in existence I've seen a greater image on the walls of where I'm living And the words twisted and scripted Remind me of something written Faith is a gift that is given down to the people If one believes it, one receives it It's given if it is needed Don't ever think you're trapped in a life that you never want Wanted. Your options are infinite, that's some mathematical logic I'm not saying I'm a prophet, I'm speaking for what it's worth These lyrics define my prayers and these battles cause I'm a church I'm not saying I'm a prophet, I'm speaking for what it's worth These lyrics define my prayers, these battles cause I'm a church everyone how are you doing okay I didn't think my screen was gonna come out right at first it's pl playing with all the settings in the beginning and it just wasn't working out but it seems to be working out now I hope you are doing well I forgot this show was on last Sunday if you guys had been watching my other streams I hadn't been feeling well so that Sunday completely lost my you know, boop. So when people ask me, well, how come there isn't another episode after two? I'm like, well, it hasn't aired yet. And they're like, yeah, it has. And I'm like, wait, what happened? Hello there, Steven. But we're going to get right into it because some people who come just to watch this, don't watch my regular show, aren't really into my long rambly intros without knowing that's kind of my shtick. So I'll humor them. I want to go to the middle here. So I watched this last night. Remember, I had an outpatient procedure yesterday. So I watched it coming off of anesthesia. So if I don't remember quite everything, I don't remember much of yesterday. But I wanted to get this done because I'm leaving for the LNC meeting at 2 o'clock in the morning tonight. So, well, technically tomorrow morning, but we're, we're driving out to the airport at 2 a.m. Um, so had to do this tonight. I haven't been to be working probably recording my radio show tonight too which will air on Saturday all right so episode three I have this thing I can't this program will not quit hold on I want to go to my force quit thing here because I'm on a Mac and the little bouncy bouncy of this program and my dock is driving me batty okay I got it to force quit perfect all right episode three woof oof okay it ended shockingly it ended shockingly um i i dug the ending because i like cliffhanger endings that are like you know 
like holy crap what just happened reminds me of game of thrones not that the show is like game of thrones but i meant the ending it was like wait what so we'll get to that but i'll say i re i really enjoyed the way they ended it because i'm going to say some other things that aren't quite so complimentary i read in some of the pre-release reviews that they really tediously stretched the show out that it easily could be half as long and i agree a lot of it is just boring if you were there and it's all people you know or you're like reliving memories i'm sure it's wonderful but for those of us who are watching it as a documentary it can get tedious there's only so many clips you can watch of people speaking at Anarcopoco. I get it. I've been to conferences. People speak. It's too long. Okay. Just frankly, it could have been, it could have been three hours, you know, three episodes instead of six, you know, maybe a part one, part two at an hour and a half each. You know, I don't know. It was too long. I keep getting bored and, 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 playing around on my phone but i will say it didn't this episode didn't end boring you know it ended listen if you guys are there's going to be spoilers so if you haven't watched it and you don't want to know spoilers tune off now because i can't discuss it without spoilers all right i gave you your warning so at the end it basically ha is showing an i'm assuming it's an old live stream of lily getting on basically saying um i for, i forgot all the names right now because again i watched this when i was coming off of anesthesia um paul's been shot john's been shot no jason i think with jason are you watching was it you that was shot several people were shot and she's on a live stream saying you know john's in bed dying come send somebody and i'm like okay you know not so sure if just sending out a, i mean i've seen the community just the voluntarist community the libertarian community come and help people way faster than any kind of official um official response could be and i don't know what any official response would be like in mexico and considering they're a bunch of anarchists they probably wouldn't call but just saying that was pretty shocking so i really want to know about the shooting um I think it was Jason and John, not Paul, because Paul had been thrown out of the house by then. Now, if you remember, I had said in episode two, you know, this Paul guy, like, I'm not too into him. Well, somebody already spoiled to me that he's the one who gets murdered later on. That made me feel bad for saying that I wasn't so into the guy, but he had a lot of problems. I mean, in this episode, it got a lot more obvious. He had a lot of problems. He started dealing coke competing with the locals can i give you some advice i've never been to mexico but i can tell you without ever being there it's probably not a good idea to be some white bread american going down there and competing with the local drug cartel i could tell you that's probably not going to turn out well for you there was a whole big question in there as to whether or not lily and john were involved with paul's operation um, she says she wasn't. I have no reason to disbelieve her. And they did throw him out. Then he ended up moving in with Jason. Not really too sure what happened after that. They said it in the show. I don't remember. The first part of the show was really, really tedious. But the end was really, really exciting. Now, they started to show how really dangerous um, uh, Acapulco could be. You know, that there are drug wars. There are people getting killed every day. And not that I'm, this is going to sound weird when I say it this way. I'm glad that they showed that. I'm not glad that people are getting killed every day, quite obviously. But I am glad that they showed, because I know the murder is coming up, that this is a violent area. It's not that the anarchists were violent. It's that it's a violent area. There's a lot going on there. So I'm kind of glad they pulled back from the Anarcopulco community and showed that, you know, 
it's just kind of what's going on there as well. Now, I want to give you all a spoiler as to what I'm going to cover by the end of this show, because the like little commie trolls, the little ANCOM trolls that like to come and watch this and really boost my algorithm with negative comments. Listen, listen, babies, I, I'm here for it. Boost my boost my algorithm, babies. That's all I can say. So I'm going to address some of y'all's comments at the end of the show or maybe somewhere towards the end because I'm going to make you watch the whole thing because I'm sadistic like that. So yeah, I will be dealing with some of the really dumb comments that have been left because th they've been fun. Um, all right. Let's see here. Oh, um, the fact that um, Jeff is a rapper, that's just hilarious to me. Okay. Let's see where we are. Okay, now the, the Anarcho Forco thing. I don't know. There was just some sour grapes and weird bitterness there. Like, I know... I, anyone who's watched the episode, I want to know, did you find it believable when John and Lily were saying, yeah, well, it's about as successful as we could have hoped for? No, I don't think so. I think there was a lot of putting on a happy face going on when it comes to that. I don't think it is what they wanted. Um, I don't think it was particularly successful. I think it was the hot mess that I predicted it would be. Um, you do, okay, anarchism doesn't have to mean, it can mean, but it doesn't have to mean no organization whatsoever. And when you don't have anyone organizing something, don't be surprised if it's an unorganized mess. All right. Oh, okay. And, and I'm looking at my notes here. Yeah, I, I do feel bad about the comments I had made about um, Paul. Because in watching the show, now I still don't think I would have gotten along with him. The dude had problems. Yes, he was a haunted soul. And, you know, the, I was really grateful of the fact they highlighted his military background. The military mind screwed that guy and they destroyed him and that was truly truly sad you know he was lashing out at everybody else though but that was that was truly truly sad so most of the show dealt with the crash of bitcoin and i don't like Though I know Anarcho Poco did this themselves. So my not liking this has nothing to do with the documentarians. Because Jeff and company did kind of do this themselves. Of how much they tied in, like, the fact of this, like, anarchist group and crypto. As if you can't have one without the other. When there existed a bunch of anarchists before there were Bitcoin. Yeah, Bitcoin cryptocurrencies is a very awesome decentralized anarchist idea. But they're not... It isn't as if you don't have one without the other. Something else would happen if it's not Bitcoin. But yeah... A bunch of the nouveau rich anarchists blowing, you know, living, living, living large. And then when the world comes crashing down a bit, it caused chaos. And that was sad as well. I remember that. But they didn't show that there were plenty of people who made a lot of money with crypto and bought things with it that are long-term investments. I have a friend that bought a gorgeous house. Like, he didn't just keep all the crypto in crypto. So when the dips come, they're not wiped out. Now, I know some people there were, but not everyone was. A lot of anarchists were a lot wiser than that, and that wasn't really shown there. What they shown there is some people who came into a lot of money really quickly and then used it to party their tails off. Okay, I get it, but that isn't the entirety of the picture. But as you can tell, I've only, I can talk. 
And I've only been talking 15 minutes and that pretty much covered that show until the end when you have Lily freaking out over over the murder. Oh yeah, it's something really weird with Paul. Okay, so Paul wanted to kill Jason's wife, like ex-wife, excuse me, that was living at Mob Pro's house. Like that was weird. I didn't get that at all. And it kind of went by too fast. Some things, and that's another thing about the show. Some things dragged on and other things that seem like they could be really interesting went by entirely too fast. So yeah, there was that, the pacing is weird. And no, there will not be a season two, Dave, because this was just meant to, it, it's just meant to be a long documentary that they're dragging out. There's not really a story behind it until like there is, but there isn't. Um, I am thrilled that the topic is coming up to normies. The anarchism is coming up to normies. So I don't want to ditch on the show like badly. I'm thrilled that it happened. But I have to tell you, if I didn't watch another episode after now, I wouldn't be sad. Like, what was that show? Was it called Jericho that, like, stopped mid-season? I was sad when that stopped mid-season. I was really sad. Oh, and Dave, if anyone else is getting buffering on YouTube, I'm so sorry. Hopefully, it won't be that way in the replay. So, I'm going to watch the whole thing. But I can't say I'm going to give it rave reviews. I really do like seeing people I know. You know, Jason is a sweetheart so far. Um, he's probably my favorite person on the show. And I'm sorry, I'm forgetting her name. But the blonde, the blonde lady whose, whose husband later, Nathan, um, died of, uh, of cancer. Um, I really like her as well. I don't remember names well. That's just me in life. And and the African-American lady that moved, the expat that moved to um, Belize. I really like her. I wish they would have shown more interactions with her. Now, it saddened me when she had said... Because if you remember in episode one, I was pretty thrilled that it wasn't just a bunch of white guys, that there were women there, that there were black people there. But then I was sad to hear her say that she felt excluded. She felt othered. And that did make me sad. And we have to do better at that because she's not some social justice warrior who's just feeling all kinds of feels because if you didn't feel oppressed, what would you feel? She's a reasonable woman. If she was feeling something, there was a reason for it. At least I think so. She came across as very genuine, so I thought that was sad. I would like to hear more about her story. I'd like to hear more about what's going on with her and Belize. Okay, now we're going to get to my commie little friends that like to comment on this video. Okay, baby dolls. I know you must be really ass mad that the word anarchism is getting out there to the wider public and it's 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 not you guys marching down the street with your you know death to capitalism stuff i get it that must be really hard on you i understand but here's the fact you don't get to gatekeep the word and i don't like the fact that ancom share the word anarchy either but you do and I don't try to say you aren't anarchists. The word anarchy is very broad. All it means is no rulers. And actually doesn't even mean that. That's just the simple shorthand. It means no unchosen rulers. Because there's nothing in anarchy that says you can't choose a leader if you want one. But none are forced upon you. I'm coming at it from the more voluntary side. So perhaps ANCOMs reject that, but it is part of the anarchist tradition. So when y'all come scurrying on over here and going, ah, but you know, you can't be a capitalist and be an anarchist because capitalism requires a state. Step back for a second here. So if you're speaking, I'm going to take your arguments as true for this, just for the sake of discussion. 
So let's say capitalism requires a state and you've got an anarcho-capitalist in front of you and you go, do you believe in the state? And they say no. How come you don't, how come you immediately turn around and say, well, you're then you're not an anarchist if you're also a capitalist, rather than saying, you know what, I believe you're an anarchist, you're just not really a capitalist. It's because you're trying to gatekeep the word. Taking your arguments as true, just for the sake of discussion, if capitalism requires a state, it doesn't prove that anarcho-capitalists aren't anarchists. It proves they're just confused about capitalism and aren't really capitalists. Why aren't you taking them at their word when they say they are anarchists? Instead, you just turn around and take them at their word when they say they're capitalists. It's because you're trying to gatekeep the word. Too bad, so sad, this ANCAP is an anarchist must be so hard on you. And no, I don't believe capitalism requires a state. And if it turns out that it does, I'm choosing anarchy. How does that sound? Deal. Deal with it. No, capitalism does not require a state. In fact, laissez-faire capitalism, which is the capitalism that I hold on to, eschews the state. Now, what you're referring to is corporatism. And it's funny when I have them screwing onto my comments, going on and on about corporations, assuming that I must be in favor of corporations without knowing that I am adamantly opposed to corporations because I'm a libertarian. Now, I know some libertarians are in favor of corporations. I've done multiple guest appearances on this on other people's shows. I need to do more of it on my own show, but I don't think corporations are even remotely libertarian. And I can argue it very quickly. Corporations require a state because they're a creature of the state. They get special rights and privileges that other forms of businesses do not get. Oh, great. I've got a bill collector. Here, now you. I'm just going to go to this camera. Speaking, speaking of corporations, I just started working again, so I'm going to be able to stop these calls. But I do have it on Do Not Disturb. My Apple iPhone, that corporation is sucking at getting me an iPhone that knows how Do Not Disturb. But now you can see my whole green screen area here. And we'll just talk right here until that annoying phone call stops. Keep going. Okay, now let's go back. <laughs> oh, and now it messed up my green screen. So now you can... This is funny. I like this. Why isn't this working now? You know, you know what? Let's turn this off and let's go to my regular studio and just have this in the background for the rest. How about that? Okay, and you can see my microphone because I had a weird setup today. But anyway, yes, corporations are not libertarian because they require special rights and privileges, namely the uh, corporate shield in which they get to avoid liability. When you have um, a libertarian system with a lack of regulations and other kinds of state restrictions, and you have something that allows businesses to escape liability, you have a freaking nightmare. The two do not go hand in hand. Never shall the twain meet. And I'm proud to say, let's move this in a little closer, that I am part of the platform committee on the Libertarian Party platform committee that um, got rid of the word corporation in our platform. Now, it doesn't say we're anti-corporate, but it doesn't no longer says we're pro-corporate the way it used to because plenty of libertarians agree with me. And you don't have to be a raging leftist to think that. So, I'm sure this will provoke a lot of commentary, but you're boosting my algorithm and making me lots of capitalist dollars. So, keep up the negative comments telling me on how I'm not an anarchist because I don't care what you think. I'm not talking about my friends here. I'm talking about the commies that are coming to my channel over, over, over this series. See, I even got my little, my little badge on. All right, guys, now this, now stop talking to the ANCOMs and talking to my friends. Leaving for the LNC meeting at 2 o'clock this morning, I probably will do live stream updates. Kathy has already got the hotel room, asked me what I needed. I said, Diet Mountain Dew, of course. I live on that. And I see um, Offer Nave, yeah, Jericho was good. 
I was truly upset when Jericho got canceled. I would not be upset if I didn't see another episode of this show. Even though it ended on a cliffhanger and I want to know what happened, I don't want to know that badly. Alrighty. I guess that is it, everyone. This is under a half an hour, which is a record for me, but I wanted to take care of this. And really, I literally only had like one, two, three, four, six lines. They aren't even full sentences of notes. It, there just wasn't that much there there. But I am confident that enough people will be intrigued that the show will make some anarchists. It will. Some people will be sitting there and be like, huh? And they'll look it up and they'll realize that's what they are. All right. That's going to be it for me for tonight. Again, regular programming will go next week after the LNC meeting. But I will try to do some little live stream updates over the course of this weekend. If you are anywhere near the Alexandria, Virginia area, I w and you are, you know, into the LP, I would love to see you at the LNC meeting, you know, and um, be sure if I don't already know you to come and say hi. Okay, everyone, I'm going to take off now and I will, excuse me, I drank that Mountain Dew too fast. I'll see you all later. Love you. Bye-bye. It's simply how we've existed I hear a lot of people talking like they politicians And choose to be an accountant Because it's safe in a business